Welcome back to Wi-Fi Movies, today I'm going to explain an American mind-blowing, horror, and mystery movie, called The Skeleton Key. This movie has an unpredictable plot twist, watch till the end to find out. The movie starts by showing a woman, named Caroline Ellis. She works as a nurse in a hospital. Currently, she has no family because her mother left her when she was a child, while his father died one year ago. At one time, there is a patient who dies in the hospital. She cannot bear to see the patient he has treated die. Therefore, she decides to quit her job. On her way home, she reads a job application as a caretaker of an isolated plantation house in Terrebonne Parish, Louisiana with a salary of $1,000 per week. For that reason, she is interested to work there. Later, she meets her best friend, named Jill, at a bar and tells her about the job. Jill is worried about her because the area is scary and there are many mystical stories about the area, but Caroline still ignores it. The next day, she goes to the location listed in the newspaper. When she gets there, she is greeted by a man, named Luke. He then invites her to meet his masters, Benjamin and Violet. She is assigned to take care of Benjamin who is mostly paralyzed by an apparent stroke. Violet forbids her to take care of the house because the house is very big. In the end, she accepts the position to work at the house. Soon, she starts to get her things and says, Goodbye, to Jill. Thus, she promises to return to the city often and visits her friend. On the way, she stops by a gas station to buy gas. However, the place is very messy. Strangely, there is also a line of brick dust outside the shop. Without any suspicion, she immediately pays for the gas and goes to Violet's house. There, Violet explains everything about the house, starting from the location of the living room and dining room, the history of the house, and also the medicine to be given to Benjamin. When she looks at a photo of two children, suddenly a mysterious photo appears on the back which read Papa Justify and Mama Cecile. Violet explains that in the house there are many rooms with different keys. Therefore, she gives Caroline a key that can open all the rooms in the house. As she walks around the house, she is confused because there is no mirror at all in the house. Violet immediately tells her by saying that they don't need a mirror anymore because they are already old. Since then, Caroline has been doing her job to take care of Benjamin. Every day, she bathes him and she takes him outside to get some fresh air. He cannot speak at all, even moving is very difficult for him. While they are in the garden, Violet tells Caroline to get some seeds from the attic. So, she rushes to the attic straight away and she sees a mysterious door that cannot be opened with her key. She has tried to insert the key many times, but her efforts are in vain. She returns to the garden to give the seeds to Violet and asks her about the room that cannot be opened earlier. Violet explains that the room could not be opened since they bought the house. As a result, Caroline is curious about the strange room. When she falls asleep, she accidentally hears a noise from Benjamin's room. Then she checks his room and finds that he has disappeared from the bed. She is confused, considering Benjamin is in a stroke condition and unable to walk. She panics that something bad would happen to him. When she looks out the window, it turns out that Benjamin is trying to escape from the house. Not long after that, he falls from the roof tile. She immediately asks Violet for help who is sleeping in her room. Violet tells her to get a wheelchair. As she returns to Benjamin's room, she finds Benjamin's bed sheet which read, Help me. Quickly, she puts the sheets in her cupboard and leaves the house to help Violet. In the morning, Luke comes to the house and declares himself to take care of Benjamin's family will. At the same time, Caroline wants to show him the bed sheet that she found last night. When the sheet is opened, the writing is gone. She then becomes puzzled and thinks that she was hallucinating because she was over-panicked. Luke gives her his business card just in case she wants to meet him later. Feeling strange, she goes to the attic to investigate the mysterious door. When using a hair clip, it turns out that something is blocking the entry of the keyhole. In the end, she manages to open the door and goes straight into it. She discovers a secret room filled with ritual paraphernalia. She takes a phonograph record, Conjure of Sacrifice. Violet suddenly comes there, causing her to break an item, but then she manages to escape. She decides to go to Jill's house and listens to the recording. The recording recites a hoodoo ritual. After hearing it, she invites Jill to go to the club. 
There, she tells Jill about the room that she has found before. Jill then explains that the room is a hoodoo room. Hoodoo is a magic used in ancient times. To convince Caroline, she tells her to visit a hidden hoodoo shop in a nearby laundromat. Because they do not believe in mystical things, they agree to return to their respective places. As a result, Caroline quietly puts all the mirrors in Violet's house. Later, Violet is surprised and immediately scolds her. Then Caroline confronts Violet, who reveals that the room used to belong to two African-American servants who were employed at the house 90 years before. The servants, Mama Cecile and Papa Justify, were renowned hoodoo practitioners. They were lynched after conducting a ritual with the owner's two children, named Martin and Grace. After the incident, Violet and Benjamin later bought the house. Violet tells Caroline that they keep no mirrors in the house because they see reflections of Cecile and Justify in them. The hoodoo followers believe that placing brick dust around the house will protect them from the bad person who uses hoodoo magic. Caroline finally surmises that Benjamin's stroke was caused by hoodoo, but she believes that his paralytic state is a nocebo effect induced by his own belief, rather than something supernatural. Feeling unsatisfied, she visits the hidden hoodoo shop. There, the hoodoo woman gives her tools and instructions to cure Benjamin. After getting the tools along with the new information, she goes back to the house. Then she conducts the ritual and surprisingly Benjamin regains some ability to move and speak. He begs Caroline to get him away from Violet. Unfortunately, Violet bangs on Benjamin's room. After she enters, Caroline immediately looks for an excuse not to be caught. Soon, she tells Luke that she is suspicious of Violet, but sadly he remains skeptical. They travel to a gas station that Caroline previously noted was lined with brick dust. She asks one of the proprietors who is a blind woman about the conjure of sacrifice. Then she learns that the caster steals the remaining years of life from the victim. Increasingly convinced of Hoodoo's authenticity, she fears that Violet will soon cast the spell on Benjamin. Back to the house, she discovers that Violet is unable to pass a line of brick dust laid across one of the house's doorways, confirming her suspicions. She incapacitates Violet and attempts to escape the house with Ben, but unluckily the front gate is chained shut. Then she hides Benjamin on the property and manages to escape from that place. Arriving at Luke's office, she finds out that Luke is Violet's accomplice. In fact, she is the target all along for the hoodoo ritual, not Benjamin. From behind, Luke suddenly knocks her and brings her back to the house. Later, she gets into a fight with Violet and violently pushes her down the stairs, breaking her legs in the process. With the use of brick dust, she is able to flee to the attic, then calls 911 and Jill for help. In the attic, she casts the spell which she believes is a protective spell. Meanwhile, Violet has caught up with her and reveals that Caroline actually trapped herself inside a protective circle, making her impossible to get out from the circle. Violet pushes a full-length mirror at her, which reflects the original owner's daughter, then Violet, and lastly Mama Cecile. At the same time, a recording of the Econjure of Sacrifice plays, and finally the two switch bodies. Violet, who is revealed to be Mama Cecil, who had been occupying Violet's body through the ritual, wakes up in Caroline's body. After that, she feeds Caroline who now is in Violet's body a potion that induces a stroke-like paralytic state like Ben. Luke, who is actually revealed as Papa Justify, arrives upstairs, revealing that Mama Cecile and Papa Justify have been conducting the Econjure of Sacrifice on new people since their supposed deaths. That time, they had swapped places with the two children just before the lynching. Because hoodoo is supposedly only effective on those who believe in it, they had to wait for Caroline to come to believe in hoodoo through her own investigation. A few moments later, the emergency services arrive and take Caroline and Luke away, trapped in the paralyzed, dying bodies of Violet and Ben. When Jill arrives, Papa Justify tells her that the couple left the house to Caroline ensuring that he and Cecile will continue to occupy the house. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out, thank you for watching.